pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get underway this evening, I'd like to uh, attend to a few housekeeping matters. First, I'd like to uh, welcome Joe and Tini back to the board. Uh, he was reappointed and is now starting on his third term with the board. Uh, welcome you to the Rondequoit Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this is our February 2022 meeting. Um, the fire exit is located to your left in the room in the event of a fire you will be notified by an announcement if so notified please move in a calm and orderly fashion to the exit do not use the elevators use either the north or the south stairs to leave the building meetings are being recorded um, by our secretary who is Donna tonight for the purpose of a record in minutes so when you come to the podium would you please speak clearly into the microphone identify yourself with your name your address and if you're the applicant when you come to the microphone after you give your name and address pause a moment raise your right hand to be sworn and then you can present your case we follow the items in the order that they appear on the agenda uh, extra copies of the agenda are available on the table by the door once the case has been called the applicant comes to the podium, as I said, identifies themselves, states their address, gets sworn, and then presents their case. Uh, during the presentation of the case, the board members uh, have an opportunity to question the applicant or uh, to engage the applicant in a discussion concerning as any aspect of the uh, application that they wish. And when that process has been completed, then we'll move into the public input portion of the, of the hearing. There are uh, public input portion consists of three categories of input that we've identified so far. First, we ask those who are in favor of the application to come forward and address the board. Then we ask those who are opposed to the application to come forward and address the board. And then we ask those who have some interest in the application but aren't for it or against it, but there's some aspect of it that they want to talk to us about they can come forward and then when that process is complete then the applicant is given an opportunity to address anything that came up uh, during the public input portion and once that's complete then the case is closed and we move on to the next case once all the cases have been heard the board usually takes a short recess then we return to deliberate each case in the order of the uh, applicants who are still present and the order of the agenda so if the first applicant has left we would take the second applicant first and then once we've taken all the applicants who remain then we go back to the top of the agenda and take those who have left in the order they appear on the agenda pretty simple tonight we only have two cases on the agenda uh, during the deliberative portion of the meeting um, there's no opportunity for further public input unless it's specifically requested by the board. There's no requirement that anyone stay. We don't lock the doors. If you are interested in knowing what was decided and don't wish to stay, you're uh, free to call the town hall uh, tomorrow after uh, 9 a.m. Ask for the uh, zoning and building department and they'll be glad to tell you what we decided on any particular case. Or you could also catch us uh, on cable TV. Uh, they run our meetings fairly often. Uh, I guess uh, they think we must be interesting or something. So, All right. So uh, with that, we'll uh, call the first case. Okay. ZB 2022-02-1, upon matter request by Herman Ortega, Jr., for an area variance to install a six-foot-high side yard fencing exceeding maximum permitted height on premises 193, Meadows Circle in an R2 residential district. Hello. Hiram Ortega Jr., 193 Meadows Circle. You raise your right hand. Yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm that everything you say tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. So you want to put a six foot fence on what? 
is considered the front lawn by the town, but you consider as your side lawn, right? Correct. That's well, the town considers it the side yard. They do? Yeah, but it can only be four feet. He went six. Oh, I thought he was on the corner lot and the... Yeah, but he's not forward of the front, front foundation line, so that's all considered side yard, even if the one parallel with the front foundation line. Oh, okay. If he goes forward of that foundation line, then it's front yard. But if he's in line with the house, that's it's still considered yard. side. Okay. Yep. So it, it, it's regarded as your side yard. For you, it's your backyard. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you want to put a new pool up there? Well, I got an above ground pool, yeah, and I want to put a fence on, uh, you know, for my family. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Is the green portion on the on the drawing intended to be four four foot high? No, that's six foot. Where he's just showing his whole work, but the yellow portion's the part that he needs a variance for. That could only be four feet by by code. But the, all the fencing is going to be six, correct? Thank yep. you, Donna. Yes. Why the green portion doesn't require variance then also? Right. The green does not, but he just thought he'd show all his fencing and the yellow is the variance portion. Okay. If I'm correct, it's because the green portion is below, past the uh, foundation line of the garage? Right. So on okay. the side yard, if your fencing is located in the rear foundation line of the adjoining property, you could also have six feet because they could have six feet. Okay. Yep. That's okay. correct. All right. Any other questions? Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition of this application? Anyone who'd like to talk to us about corner lots, fences, or anything like that, above ground pools at this time of the year doesn't seem to be really attractive, but <laughs> a few months it will be. Seeing none, we'll close the hearing with respect to this matter and move on to the next item on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, sir. ZB 2022-02-2, upon the matter request by Woods, Ovid, and Gilman, LLP, acting as agent for four. 50 Empire Boulevard LLC for an area variance to establish a relocated store for a tobacco retail dealer and vapor products dealer business less than 1,000 feet from the nearest point of the property line of a school, playground, or child care facility on premises 450 Empire Boulevard in a C business district. Good evening, Mr. Goldman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Just for those who may be watching, Mr. Goldman is an attorney, so he does not need to be uh, sworn because he has much greater risks of not being candid than would otherwise be the case. So. Ethical obligations, constraints, and all of that. All of that. Duty of candor, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Absolutely. And, and a proud uh, former resident of Aranacoit, having grown up in, uh, in town for, uh, for my pretty much my entire youth. Um, good evening, Mr. And Chairman. we won't get into graduation years. Yeah, we won't get into graduation years. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, again, for the record, my name is Jerry Goldman. I'm the attorney and agent for 450 Empire Boulevard, LLC. With me tonight in this application is Michael Palumbo uh, from Flown, president of Flown Management, who is a development representative for the owner of the subject property. Uh, the application that we're here for tonight is related to um, the relocation desire of 7-Eleven to move from the northwest corner of Empire Boulevard to the northeast corner of Empire Boulevard. They, that 49 and a half feet that it's moving um, 
requires us to come to the board, at least according to staff's interpretation, um, because we are less than a thousand feet from the Hellendale Road Primary School. The existing location is 816 feet away from the school, and this is on the map that, uh, that was attached to your application. And our proposed site is located 814 feet, so it is essentially two feet closer. Um, the law which was adopted uh, by the town last year is essentially an analog and a result of state legislation, uh, which is looking to uh, provide for some protection for our youth in terms of the um, of the having of tobacco and vape product sales. We are uh, essentially only moving across the street. Uh, there will not be another location um, as a result of this. So basically we are neutral relative to whatever impact there may be. The existing 7-Eleven does sell uh, tobacco and vape products. 7-Eleven does have licenses for uh, tobacco and vape products, and we're just looking to locate across the street. So essentially our variance application uh, is to permit that relocation. Um, and it does provide a certain degree of protection to the extent that um, we, have, we have this new store and we do have that thousand foot separation in place, which pretty much assures that there will not be um, any other tobacco or vape sales within uh, this geographic area. The subject property is zoned C business. Um, and in the C business district, the convenience stores uh, with tobacco sales are permitted. Um, we do believe that there is no impact of our, um, of our proposal. Um, the legal standard for grant of area variances is set forth in our letter of intent. Rather than go through um, an extended review, uh, the primary test is the benefit to the applicant as opposed to the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood. Certainly allowing 7-Eleven to relocate their business as they have proposed uh, would be a strong benefit to the applicant. And given the fact that we are basically only moving across the street and are going to be neutral, uh, we don't believe that there is any detriment uh, to the neighborhood by this application. There are five measuring standards. You have them uh, listed in front of you. Uh, rather than drone on and on, um, I would be glad to answer, Mike would be glad to answer any questions that the board may have. I had a question just for clarification. Sure. When was the site plan application filed? The site plan application has not been filed yet. Because and the reason for it is that we need to clear this hurdle before we spend serious money on engineering to fully engineer the site for site plan. So our intention would be uh, to go through the remainder of the approval process once we're squared away with this issue. Thank you, uh, Donna. Can you just clarify when the uh, one thousand foot um, was adopted by the town? Well, this is added a August 17th, 2021. The one that I passed out while I was late coming down. And has a number of exceptions. I think that's what you were leading to. And the fact of the matter is, I, I don't think that there was an intention really to capture something like this. But in order, to, in order to get it on paper, it accepted things that had site plan applications pending, variance applications pending, uh, and the like. So. Um, I, I think that we're outside the intent of the, uh, of the ordinance to try to restrict this. How long has the uh, current store been operating at that location? Mike, do you know? I, I really don't know. It's been there quite a while. In, in excess of 10 years. It clearly is in excess of 10 years. It's in a building that has other uses in the back as well. So 
uh, they've been there quite a while. And I take it the reason for the move across the street to a new building is so it'll have new, mo more modern uh, trappings of electronic and other things? True. And uh, another thing which is on the plan which you received is uh, their intention is to have uh, gasoline sales there, which requires a special permit from the town board. They don't have gas sales there now? They don't have gas sales now. Oh, okay. All right. What um, precautions do they take to uh, avoid the uh, purchase of tobacco and vape products by minors? I believe that all employees are very well schooled in terms of being sure to ask if anybody appears to be a minor and ineligible to purchase. I actually went in the store on Saturday to, to get a sense as to how they operate, and, and they appear to operate very tightly. I mean, it, it was kind of like I was, I was in the store and looking around a little bit, and the clerk came up and said, okay, what can I help you with? Uh, they don't. They don't. I don't think they put up with a whole lot at that location. Is there any um, advertising or marketing of tobacco and vape product, like yeah. signs or anything inside? I did not see any. Uh, I had to look. It is behind. It's behind the counter in the cash register, but I didn't see anything which was clearly directing people toward it. And if I'm correct, the difference in distance between the property line of the school, for, between the school and the existing location, and the school and the new location is two feet? Correct. We have, we've shown it on a map, which is part of the application. It's 816 feet from the existing location, 814 feet from the proposed location. Jerry, do you know the source of the distancing? Because I'll tell you right now, I got a different measurement on when I did it. OK. Uh, the source of distancing came from the engineering consultant on this uh, on this project. Okay, but you don't know. I didn't, personally, I didn't, I didn't scale it. It doesn't appear uh, that this was a survey measurement. Yeah. Uh, not, not that it's really a great issue with me but my measurement came up with 760 feet okay so but it's still it's still less than a thousand so we need to deal with it that's correct i think eventually they'll have to do a site plan i, I would like them to correct physically measure and get an exact Property line to property line measurement. Absolutely, we will we will go through the uh, the full site plan process, um, and and that you know entails getting more detailed survey information and everything else. Any other questions or comments from the board? Hours of operation. Want to try to find out? We'll we'll get. They used to be open twenty four hours seven days a week, didn't they? Twenty four seven here. That's what yeah. I thought. Okay. One of the old riddles we used to ask the scouts was if they're open twenty four seven, why do they have locks on the door? <laughs> well, the other question is why would something called Seven Eleven be open twenty four seven? That's another one. How's the math? Yep. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments from the board? All right, and we'll, uh, if there's anyone here to uh, speak in favor of this application, please come up to the podium. Hi, my name is Kern Preet Singh, franchisee of that 7-Eleven location, 430 Empire Boulevard. Could you spell your name for me? Yes, the first name is spelled K I R N. P R E E T. Last name is S I N G H. Um, just to some questions you were asking, I can answer them for you. Great. Right. Yeah. So, um, 
that location actually has been there for over 25 years. And um, your main question that you're asking, like how we control our like sales, our system is set up in a way that you can't make a tobacco or vape sale or any alcohol sale without physically scanning that person's um, license. So they, there's no way of bypassing that. So that makes it um, clear that you are IDing everyone. So we have that set up in the system. And I just, and our whole goal is to get it over there just so we have provide gas, because there's no gas stations in, anywhere nearby, and just more opportunities. That's it. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here who'd like to speak in opposition to this application? Good evening, Lexi Popovich, 1595 Elmwood Avenue. Um, I am the director of the Smoking Health Action Coalition of Livingston Monroe Counties, and we are under the branch of the American Lung Association. Um, I worked closely with uh, Supervisor Seeley, Director Yondequay, and some town board members on this policy, um, the zoning policy. We worked several years on it, and we've worked with other towns that have also had zoning policies. Um, this is my first area variance um, situation that's, that's arose, but um, I just want a clarifying question. I don't know if, so if it's not located in this new site, is it going to remain in that site that it's at now? Yes. Okay. If the, if the chairman wants me to answer, I shouldn't be talking directly to you. I'm more than glad to answer. Yes. We don't have a large crowd here tonight, <laughs> so the answer is yes. Okay. The answer is yes. It okay. will be remaining. It'll, their store will be there. Okay. I had assumed that that was the case. Okay. Thank you. Um, so in terms of weighing against the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of a neighborhood community, so when we passed this policy, you know, 16 or so vape and tobacco retailers were grandfathered in out of the 27 tobacco and vape, vape retailers in the town itself. So that's still a large amount. That's 16 that are within 1,000 feet of, you know, primary schools, middle schools, high schools. Um, so in our work, that's, that's a lot. That's a detriment to the health and safety. I understand if they're moving, it's, it's still within that 1,000 feet. That's still an operating place and nothing would really change, but overall the detriment of having, you know, just another tobacco or vape retailer near schools and youth centered locations with the research and what we do, it, it is a detriment to the health and safety, mostly of adolescents. Um, we work around the county. We know that a lot of places are selling to minors or, you know, we've even heard gifting marijuana at some vape shops. I know that's not the case with 7-Eleven, but, um, this is something that's been a youth epidemic with adolescents. Um, the closer they are to schools, the more likely of that in-store advertising, the marketing, tobacco company consultants will come in with mostly ones in minority neighborhoods and ones in youth-centered locations, and they will actually offer incentives to those local corner stores or retailers. And for those incentives, they can operate where they wanna put their placement of the products. Usually that's around candy, um, other fruit and can um, Coca-Cola and things like that are at kid-friendly levels. So that's part of that. Um, if they're closer to schools, they actually offer more two-for-one discounts, more price promotions, um, and more menthol and flavored products, which kids are attracted to, and that's targeted marketing from Big Tobacco. So that's with that thousand-foot buffer that we worked on, and that's, um, you know, with the no preemption law in New York State, that's what our we really push on the local municipalities to have that control over keeping that thousand feet. Um, just in terms of the marketing, um, the access, if, if kids are within that thousand feet, they're two times more likely to not even initiate smoking, but the access to the, to the products, to vape products and tobacco products. So the likelihood of initiation and accessibility of the products is a concern. Again, I know they're, if they would stay in that location, it's still like nothing's kind of changing. But in terms of the detriment of health and safety overall, having 16 tobacco and vape retailers within that 1,000-foot buffer zone already in the town is kind of like we're up here and we want to decrease it so we're getting more safe and protecting those kids that are coming up. So um, in terms of that, that's kind of um, what we think about that. And if, if the measurements do add up and, you know, even if it's 100 so feet, it's still 
in a, that thousand foot buffer, which um, we believe is a detriment to, to youth and adolescents and all the children that we work with that are trying to quit using products who are addicted, who walk by these corner stores or walk home from a school and see these locations, you know, that's a cue to smoke. You know, you're seeing the advertising, you're seeing these products, and that's what we hear from East and West Roundaquite from the school counselors and how many kids are struggling in the access of the products. I guess the question that I have is, I mean, I, I fully understand the reasoning behind the thousand foot buffer. Mm -hmm. I fully understand that having 16 uh, locations within that thousand foot buffer is not a really desirable uh, circumstance. What I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around is how maintaining 16 is a detriment mm -hmm. and especially when we're talking a difference of two feet. Right. And I know you mentioned it might be 760 feet, but what have you. I mean, it's and if the distance from the school, whether it's 700 something or 800 and 14, it's a two foot difference. Right. Um, I have a hard time wrapping my head around how two feet is going to increase the likelihood that somebody's going to be able to evade the safeguards that seven. I know. Right. I can't buy a pack of cigarettes there without showing my license. Which I is don't great. smoke, uh, but I've tried it before. Yeah. And, and I know that. Um, so. Um, you know, I, I just don't understand, I, I understand exactly and, and I'm very happy for uh, what you've done and, and for having this, right. but in this particular case, uh, I just can't see where the detriment is from letting them build a new store to sell gas that satisfies a need in the area mm -hmm. and doesn't really increase at all or affect at all, uh, in my view, the, the two foot difference, uh, the likelihood that that's going to cause anyone to start or not be able to stop smoking. Right. And I mean, we didn't know that it was a relocation until we got here tonight. Okay. But I think in terms of just the principle of creating a healthier community, you know, I get it's, you know, could be a two feet, but just the principle behind it, um, so we're here to advocate regardless of if that makes sense or not for the two foot difference, but we are here to advocate for those policies and for future policies that could be a, you know, a new store coming in. Well, a new, new store coming in would be a whole different uh, ball game mm -hmm. because that, that would then be, this is something that's been there, that's been in business. Uh, I had thought it was more than 10, 25 sounds about right from what I recall. And, uh, um, I, I can't see that keeping them where they are as opposed to moving across the street and being two feet closer to the school really constitutes that much of a detriment. Right. Yeah, overall, I mean, it's just the detriment of the entire entirety of having vape and tobacco, and that's more so kind of what we're advocating for. Okay. But I understand. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Wait, can you spell your name for me so I have... Yes. P-O-P-O-V-I-C-I yeah. -O -O -I -I is the last name. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition to the application? I just have some... So this might be... Uh, step, you got to step up to the podium so everybody can hear you. All right, I wasn't sure if this would be for or neither for nor against. So well, my since name... we've, we, you can <laughs> move, up, move over, so you can nudge over into the, into the either for or half against. And, half yeah. and half. And I, I um, yeah, so Sarah Brown. I live at 152 Shady Creek Road in Henrietta, but I'm here on behalf of the Smoking and Health Action Coalition and the American Lung Association. And um, I would just ask... Um, that you either consider, I don't know if I can ask questions, but my question is, is there, um, now that it's gonna be a bigger size store, it's gonna be a bigger size, so my questions would be, is it going to be a bigger size store? And if it is, is more floor space going to be dedicated to tobacco or vaping? 
is more wall space going to be dedicated to tobacco or vaping um, marketing or advertising? So I guess those would be my questions, is to make sure that we are not um, increasing uh, promotions and uh, the, the like. I, because I know what Lexi was saying was that tobacco companies will step in and say, okay, well, you're selling our product, you need this much floor space, these need to be this high. Um, and so I just, those would be my questions to figure out before um, the board approved that is um, those kinds of questions. Will there be more product, more floor space dedicated to tobacco and nicotine um, and that kind of thing? Just because if youth do have access, I mean, I would love to see if I would, if tobacco products could be hidden, you know, I think that that would make this very easy. And I, I think partly the principle, like we could say, okay, well, it's only two feet. Well, it's only a hundred feet. Well, it's only 200 feet. Um, and I'm all for business and I don't, I don't want to minimize that um, because I think 25 years in business um, and just moving across the street is, is amazing and if it's gonna benefit the business and the overall community, I think that's great. I just don't, wouldn't wanna see more tobacco, um, you know, made available in that extra space. So that's all. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Ginny Nacy, 122 Old North Hill, here in Arundaquay. Um, I was going to speak against, but after hearing that it's a two-foot difference, um, I'm having a hard time doing that as well. Um, and certainly if it benefits the community in, in that area with more gas stations, I thought we had enough in Arundaquay. But if we need them in that space, that's fine. Not in that fine. neighborhood, apparently. Okay, not in that neighborhood. I do want to commend the um, store and, and the folks in that store to do what they do with carding people and actually scanning them. Great job. So, um, but I'm going to reiterate what Sarah said in terms of making sure that we're not doing advertising on windows, especially as we, we know kids are going to be walking by there. So if there's any way to... Um, to make that as a condition, and I don't know what the rules are around zoning, but if there's any kind of condition around signage, that's, I think, a key factor. And, um, you know, I, as I go around town and you see big signs and windows that say vape products and 1999, a special deal for that kind of thing, uh, those are the things we don't want to have kids being privy to on their way home to and from school. Um, so I guess at this point in time, I, I don't have any negative things to say other than I'm hoping maybe we will be able to work with, with them. Um, I represent Drug Free Arondequait and am hoping that uh, we can work with other, other retailers to make sure that we are keeping our children safe while they can still run a business. Um, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Could you say your last name again? I didn't catch Sure, it's Nacy, N-A-C-Y. Does the uh, applicant wish to address any of the concerns that were raised during the public input portion? I want to say that we are sensitive to the concerns that have been raised relative to tobacco and vape products and, and youth. Uh, just to note, and I think everyone knows this, the school that we are talking about is a K through two primary school. Um, and I know people may start early, but uh, but in essence, we, we don't think that it will have uh, that kind of bang. If, uh, right now, if anybody's been in the store, you can see that the sales of the cigarettes are contained uh, behind, the, behind the counter and very well controlled. And I think that that is a 7-Eleven policy and something that they're very much, uh, very much intent on following. We aren't another retailer, and I, and I think that retailers that are exclusively vape or something like that would have a tendency to be a little bit more of an issue. But again, this is, this is a part of the overall 7-Eleven program. 
uh, with that. Seems to me you probably do more in beer sales than you do in cigarette sales. Well, um, I, as far, <laughs> you know, I, I can't speak to that, but... No. But in in reality, we have to, we have to watch out for all of our vices, you know. Oh, absolutely. No, no matter what they may be, we uh, we have opted in in town for uh, for marijuana sales. I don't know what's going to happen with those or where they're going to be, but uh, but you know we we do, and I'm very sensitive to Miss Nisi and drug free, uh, Arundacoid. I think I think all all the speakers here are very very well intentioned, and we don't want to do anything to really detract from from their efforts uh, from my perspective if this was closer to a middle school or a high school I, I'd be a little bit more sensitive about it too I have a question for our council is it permissible to put any uh, conditions on the granting of a variance that would limit advertising of or where in the store the product could be displayed and sold from yeah, my thought was that that would be, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know she mentioned signage, in which obviously would, would, would come up for the, the planning board. Um, I, I'd have to double check because I don't know if you could, if you could say they have to limit, you know, X percentage of, of space. Um, I think it, it, I'd have to confirm, but I think it might be out, outside of the scope, especially for the, uh, purposes of the area variance. I was yeah. thinking the same thing, but I'll. Uh, and These would be planning board issues, pretty much. The well, the planning board would be involved with where the signs go, and, and does the planning board get into signs in the window and like special uh, advertising things? They can, uh, with Donna. Okay. Right, they could, and there's only a percentage you could do of your window. But yeah, they're, they're pretty particular signage. The planning board, <laughs> they are. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I know though that there's limits on conditions that we're allowed to put in. Yeah, business operations are not supposed to be conditioned as part of uh, as part of this type of thing. I know years ago we would condition fences on installing shrubbery in front of them and things like that, and then. We found out that that might not be, uh, while it might be desirable, it might not be uh, legal. <laughs> so that's why I was curious yeah. about that kind of a condition. Okay. Right. Anything further? I have nothing further. Anything further from anyone on the board? We'll close the hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Travis. Yeah, quick question. So how long has the current owner owned the business and the franchisee of the 7-Eleven? Uh, can you tell us how long you've been the franchisee? Four years. Four years. Okay. Thank you. All right, we will close the hearing with respect to this matter. Great, thank you. And... Uh, take a recess all right we will continue going since it's only 20 of eight we're not used to finishing up quite so early um, all right uh, I see that all the applicants are present so we will go in the order that uh, they appear on the agenda which means that the uh, first matter for consideration by the board is the application pretending or <laughs> pertaining to 193 Meadow Circle. Uh, this is a type 2 action for seeker purposes. Does anyone wish to make a motion with respect to this application? I'll make a motion that we grant the application as presented by the applicant based on the following findings of fact. Uh, change to the character of the neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of uh, side yard fences uh, that are vinyl uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, as far as alternatives, I think um, there's not really an alternative. I mean, he's lining it up directly to the back of his house, and it's going to be um, it's going to be uh, surrounding a pool uh, that he has. It's not a substantial request. It's only a two foot increase. Uh, it's not going to change. Uh, or it's not so, well. It is self created, but uh, I think it's going to be to the benefit of the applicant as well as the neighborhood. 
and then the environment, uh, there's no substantial impact to the environment by him, the owner uh, or the applicant, um, putting in a fence uh, in his side yard to make the property look more aesthetically pleasing. I'll second. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Five votes in favor, no opposed, no abstentions. Two members of the board are absent. Next item on the agenda for our consideration is the application pertaining to uh, 450 Empire Boulevard. Uh, I believe this is also a type two action for secret purposes. Well, we'll proceed as if it's an unlisted action. I would move that um, we uh, adopt the finding that uh, uh, of a negative declaration with respect to the environmental impact of the variance, not necessarily of what's going on if at the future, but any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Mo I did. Brad did. Five votes in favor, no opposed, no abstentions. Two members of the board uh, remain absent, so the motion carries. I'll make a motion that we grant the variance uh, as requested with the following findings of, of fact. There will not be any real change to the character of the neighborhood as the retail establishment has been there for uh, 25 years. Uh, the only change will be that there will now be an, <coughs> an opportunity for people in the neighborhood to uh, put gas in their cars uh, without having to go to one of the multiple uh, gas stations on Culver and Ridge. Uh, the alternative that wouldn't require a variance is to continue in the current location, uh, which would, uh, while, uh, it would pose a hardship on the applicant because they are not able to uh, accommodate selling gas at that location, and uh, they wouldn't uh, have the same opportunity um, for <coughs> improving um, uh, things like the electronic things that are easier, from what I'm told, to put into new construction than they are to retrofit uh, old construction. Plus, it would be, then be a newer building uh, that would be uh, 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 an improvement uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, it is not a substantial request, as noted. Uh, whether it's 700 and something or 800 and something, the difference between the location of the school and the location of the business uh, in the new location as opposed to the old location is a matter of two feet. If it was a matter of 100 feet, that might be a different story, but two feet is way on the low end uh, of being substantial. Uh, it will not have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. It's uh, really not a self-created situation because they want to meet a need in the neighborhood for uh, selling gas and also at the same time meet their need for increased revenue. Uh, but, um, so I don't think it's self-created. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? No. Joe did. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We have two board members that remain absent. Motion carries, five votes in favor, no opposed, no abstentions, two members still absent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck.
we get into the, uh, the discussion of the minutes of our previous meetings uh, that we received with the package, there was one thing that I wanted to mention to those who are uh, watching on uh, cable or who watch a replay at a later time, and that is that uh, for various reasons I was not able to get over to the Meadow Circle location until uh, about 6.30 tonight. And by then it was still dark. And I, I have to emphasize how difficult it is once the sun goes down and it's dark to find house numbers on the streets. The uh, going down metal circle, there were only two houses out of about 20 that you were able to see and the numbers on the side of the house. I, I know that it may not seem like a big deal, but <laughs> if I'm having a heart attack at home and the ambulance is trying to figure out where, which house I'm in, it could make a significant difference. So I would encourage everybody to get nice big numbers and put a light on them that comes on at night uh, so people can figure out where you are. All right. That's my public service announcement for tonight. So with the uh, materials for this evening's meeting, uh, everybody should have received minutes from the July 12th uh, meeting. Uh, did everyone receive those? Yes. All right. And uh, are there any uh, corrections or additions to the minutes for July 12th? Then I would move that we adopt the minutes of July 12th. Um, well, actually, no, I will not move that we adopt the minutes of July 12th. Is there someone who wishes to make a motion? Mr. Upson. All right. Um, is, is, yep. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. And uh, can we approve? We just need a majority of the members who were present, correct? I think that's right, yes. Okay. Then uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Good, because you're the only three who were present <laughs> <laughs> that are here tonight. All right. Uh, minutes for July 12th are improved uh, by a vote of uh, three votes in favor, uh, two abstentions, and two members of the board. Uh, are absent. Then we also had the minutes from the meeting of October 4th of 2021. Did everyone have an opportunity to review those minutes? Yes. And I'll make a motion that, oh, are there any uh, suggested improvements, additions, corrections, or revisions? Seeing none, I'll move that we adopt the minutes for the meeting of October 4th. 2021. Is there a second? Second. Quick question. Yes. Did we have, whatever happened with that, um, the coal wood, did that fence ever come down or did we review, did town staff look at that or what, what happened with that? I had asked that the other day and I, I know that uh, uh, that is being looked into. I haven't thought to drive by yet, but I would encourage everybody to do that. I know when I drove by shortly after the meeting, it was still up, and uh, I was advised that the town was waiting for the time limitations to expire from any appeals or challenges to the decision, which makes sense. Uh, but any other questions or comments concerning the October 4th minutes? All, right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Five votes in favor, no opposed, and no abstentions, and two members of the board remain absent. And then next we have minutes from the November 1st uh, meeting, November 1st, 2021. Uh, does anybody have any uh, suggestions uh, for revisions, changes, additions? 
or corrections to the minutes as prepared. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the November 1st, 2021 meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Joe? No, this is November 1st. That's all right. Aye. Motion carries three votes in favor, no opposed. Uh, I abstain. Two right. abstentions, and uh, two members of the board are absent. Last but not least, now we'll move into 2022. The meeting minutes from the, our meeting on January 3rd. Um, any, does anybody have any suggested corrections, additions, uh, deletions, or other revisions? Seeing none, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the January 3rd, 2022 meeting. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We have one, two, four votes in favor, uh, no opposed, uh, no abstentions, two members of the board are uh, absent, and we only had six members on the board in, for January. That's why the math adds up. I had a question, Donna. Do we have an alternate lined up? One has not been approved yet, so. I don't know. They may be working on it, but not not approved yet. Unless anybody has any other business to uh, come before the board, uh, we are adjourned. Start motion motioning to adjourn. Oh, we have. Oh, then I'll move that we adjourn. Yes, I'm. Second. Second. <laughs> second. second. All, right. all those in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Any abstentions? And we have uh, so the motion approves or is carried four votes in favor, one opposed, no abstentions, and two members are absent. 